So you're lucky enough to be able to get in play squad, one of the best military shooters out there currently, even though we're in alpha. And this basic guide is going to help you get up and running and show you a few things you may not even know if you've been in the beta for a while anyway, or should I say the alpha. So the first screen we're going to see is you are dead. Don't worry, we're in, the game's all good. And we're going to press the enter key to see this screen. Now I'm going to go through a lot of the details on the screen on the map in a later part of this video, but for now our first role or our first option is to join a squad. Up here you can see which team we're on, we're currently on the Taliban side, we have squad and role. These are the current squads that are already existing, Charlie, Alpha and Redcoats, and you can see the number here, 9 members in each squad, and you simply press the join button to join each one of these squads. Now we do have the ability to create our own squads up here. We can wipe this across, type in the name of our squad and click create. I need help. We all need a little help don't we? So there we are, I've created my own squad down here, one of nine. And I'm in squad three. Now we're going to leave this because we, the whole basis of the game is team play and to join a squad. And as we've got three squads here, we can join these guys. This one's got seven of nine. Redcoats, I know these guys, I've played with them before, lots of good team playing here. So we can join their squad, Squad 4. As you can see, it shows us on the right here each member of that squad and what their current role is on the left. So our next thing we need to do is click the Role button. And as you can see here, there's two of two medics, one of one, uh, two or three gunner, and so forth. And we need to pick a role that we want to pick. Currently, if the one I've got selected is the Rifleman. Now, these are unlimited, so you can click these if there's any other options in here that you want and you can't currently get them. This is the one to pick. And I shall show you the details on this map over on the right-hand side in a lot more details, including these options up here. And there is a little help button down here. Should you need it and want to know a little bit of information about what's on this map, you can go to that option. But I will be covering a lot of this stuff later in this video. As you can see down here, blue are the friendlies, and we can put our mouse over them and see each individual name. And the numbers on them represent the squad leader numbers. So as we are in squad 4, our squad leader is up at the top, as you can see, squad 4. So this is our current squad leader, and all the other green dots are the members of our squad, and the way and the direction they're actually looking in and pointing can be seen on the map. I'll also be covering spawning in on here, but for now we're just going to click this up here to keep it nice and simple. And this is it, we're now in game, boots on the ground, or in our case flip flops on the ground. And uh, yes, let's move on to the next section. We have some basic controls that you're going to be used to if you've played any basic shooter. A, W, A, S and D to move around. In the usual manner. We can also press the left control key to crouch and you can toggle this in the menu if you want to keep it on hold. Now we also have left alt key which is a key that I don't think a lot of people use. It actually makes you walk and it works in crouch as well and it means you can actually sneak up on the enemy and you won't be heard. Not a lot of people know that key and it is quite handy when you're up nice and close. We also have Q and E for looking around corners. Uh, these are not bindable to be able to stick, so it is a little quicker button to look over and back. We also have this space key, which will enable you to jump, and it's better to do a run and jump. But of course, all these actions will affect your stamina, and that's something I'm going to talk to you about now. As you can see in the bottom right when I start to run, this is my stamina bar. Currently, it's all good. This stamina bar will go down extremely quickly when you're jumping. This is due to the amount of kit that most uh, military personnel carry these days, up to 40 to 60k. So running around like a madman in full sprint will get you extremely tired indeed. And what you'll find is you won't be able to jump, sprint, and eventually you'll just end up at this, which is a tapping pace, tactical advance to battle. Now the quickest way to get your stamina back is to stand up if you crouch or go into the prone position, which is the Z key, this will actually increase your stamina and bring it back quicker. And of course, this does affect your aim and stability when shooting.
Now the hood is absolutely minimal and that's exactly how we like it. And at the bottom right we can see 1 and A. Now depending on which class you are this information will change. You will press the 1 key and this will alternate between semi-fire, burst and full auto depending on which weapon you are. Currently I'm the automatic gunner or the saw gunner so this is not going to change for me but that information is relevant down at the bottom right. We also have the compass, which is a really handy feature. If you've got some uh, guys next to you and you see a contact, you can call it out 320, enemy 200 yards, etc, etc. So the rest of the guys are with you because of course, of course, you will be sticking with your squad and not running off. This is a really handy tool in order to be able to find the enemy. And also when your squad leader says we're going to be heading at this degrees or direct south, you know which way to start marching. Now the HUD also has other information on it, as you can see here down at the bottom right, because I'm with my squad, my other squad members are within a vicinity of me, so they appear on here. This is extremely handy, as you can see the medic, so if I'm injured and he's not listening to me, I can run directly to the medic and he can run to me as I will show up on his HUD. Think of this as SD HUD in armour if you've played armour, and it's an absolutely brilliant tool and I love the fact that it's minimal and so will you as well. We also have information at the top left, which I will go into in a further part of this video, which describes the FOB and the team, and you can see at the bottom left the people who are speaking, etc, etc, but again I will be covering this all in the later part of this video. You can also point your weapon at a distance at your squad mates and friendlies, and their names will pop up, which means less of the friendly fire, and no more excuses when you get TK'd. Like I have now because I fired a shot. Thank you, Mr. American. Thank you for TK, mate. You can have that back. While in game, you may hear some of your teammates call out an enemy location or an enemy FOB, and it will be things like this it will be B4 keypad 5. So basically, we follow the grids so we get to them, such as B4. And then as you can see, each square is broken up into nine. Well, that represents the keys on your numpad. So number five will be the center square and so forth. This is an easy way in-game in order to be able to tell the rest of your teammates either where you are, what you've seen, what you're doing, or even if you found buried treasure. Other things to note when we're actually in-game regarding the map, if I bring the map up by pressing the M key, I cannot now use my radio. So I can click my radio button all day long, even though the icon shows up, it will not speak. So don't go using your radios once you've got your map up, because it doesn't work. Now that we've got the map up on screen and we're running around, we can press the N key and that will zoom us in three times, like so. All good, in the hood. This is the actual map screen when we're dead and we're waiting to spawn back in. So how do we actually get back in and what does all this stuff on here mean? Well this is our main base here and we can spawn back here at any point once we're dead by clicking on this point here and pressing the close button and it'll bring us straight back in flip flops or boots on the ground. Now as I mentioned earlier these numbers here represent the squad leaders. This is the squad leader for squad 3 and this is squad leader number 2. So we're in squad 3. Now if our squad leader hasn't put down a rally point which means that we will be able to spawn anyone here. We don't really have a lot of options apart from spawning at this, which is an FOB. And I will discuss this again later with the squad leader role, showing you where you can actually come in and how we create these. But your squad leader has built this, and we can spawn at any of these. That includes the whole team, so everybody here on our side can spawn at these locations. This icon here means that squad leader number two has put down a rally point. So only squad 2 can actually spawn here. So don't try clicking on this thing here trying to get in the game, you just won't be able to. And these are limited to the amount and it actually says there are four spawns left before that will disappear. And the number can be limited but for now, as things change in the beta, it's not always limited to a certain amount, say 10 each time. So that's why I haven't really discussed that in further detail and that's something for you to think about. Other icons on this map include these purple shields. So I know that our team, such as Squad Leader 3 by the looks of it, has moved to this position and they have to defend. 
Think of the shield as defending off the bad guys. An attack icon will be yellow and it will be a pointing down arrow. This means you are to attack this location. Things to keep in mind. If there is one attack and one defend, don't have your entire squad or the whole team attacking. You must have somebody to defend this location. Otherwise, if the previous location or the one they attack in hasn't been captured yet and the enemy captures this, you will not be able to capture this point. Always be aware on your map of a defense and an attack location on this map. As you can see here, up at the top, the down arrow is your objective. Triangles, forward bases or FOBs, rally points and the main base and players. So everything we have covered is in here. It's just a little bit of common sense. Now a thing that I have noticed a lot of new players doing is they rush up to here. Now you could preempt this if you know this is going to be the next flag, but you cannot capture this point. You cannot capture this point. Let me make that clear again. These guys here, redundant. You cannot capture this point until there is a yellow down marker on this point. Other things to note at this point as well are we can move the mouse, the map in with our mouse. Like so now to capture a point you need at least two members. You hear me? Two members. If there are two enemy members in this area as well, you cannot capture it until there are more members of each team in that area. And this also works for defending the area. If there's nobody around and you enter it, you need two players to take the area back and neutralize it. So it is a game of numbers. The game cannot be won with lone wolfing. Now we have some icons up here and currently in game at the current state of the beta these are only available for you and your squad. So I can click on these I can draw a circle as so but only I will see these icons unfortunately unless I am the squad leader and we can change these to draw whatever we want to draw on here and we have the eraser and we can start erasing these icons on here. Now as a squad leader, a function that is working in game, we also have the PH button which means that the map will follow. If I click on a certain player it will follow that person around on the map and locate them. And we can click on that to follow that player. Nice, simple and juicy. Yeah, squad leader is there. In this section I'm going to show you quickly how to use the in-game chat and the communication tools. It's really not that difficult and once you've done it a couple of times you'll soon get used to it. So in order for me to be able to communicate with the rest of my squad, I'm going to press the B key. This is the B key. And as you can see down at the bottom left, it shows you. Down at the bottom left you may have noticed some red text popping up then and speaking. If you are a squad leader, you can speak to the other squad leaders and the rest of your team and nobody else will be able to hear this. In order to do this, we press the G key. Hello squad leaders, this is a test. Roger, you test. And there we go, you can see they responded. Nobody else heard me apart from the other squad leaders, so you know that is working. All good. We also have a local chat button. So anybody within a 10-15 metre vicinity of myself will hear me when I speak and with that key it is the V key. As you can see at the bottom left, anybody around me now would hear me speaking. There is not open mic, so when you're talking away while you're playing people simply will not hear you. Now in order for text chat we have J, K and L. L chat is just to my squad. Only people in my squad will actually see this. Then we have the K key. That will be sent to the whole team, or our side basically, all the Taliban. And the J key is for everybody. Simple, easy and usable. It's probably best if you can don't use the in-game chat, it does annoy people, it does kill the immersion 
and it's something that really you should be using the voice chat and let your squad commanders do what they've got to do. Hello to you as well Protocol and Snakebite. <laughs> let's move on to the next section. So let's have a look at a few extra basics. There's an ammo crate here and to use this we come up to it and we press the F key and depending on whether each this class is available you simply pick which one you want or you can click resupply. For now I'm gonna go with the fighter and here's our basic fighter. So we know the right mouse button is to look down the sights and you can press your left shift button to focus which is basically the same as you holding your breath. It's limited, it doesn't last forever, so use it where you want it. And of course, going into the crouch or prone position is going to help you even further. Now, with our grenades, we have two ways of throwing these things. If we press the left mouse button, we can hold this. It's not going to cook it, so don't worry, you're not going to kill yourself. And we can throw this a long way, straight over there. As you can see, it's quite a long way. We're going to get one grenade, so I'm going to come back to the ammo box, press the F key, resupply, get myself another grenade out. Oops, that's not a grenade. No matter, I can show you with the smokes anyway. Basically, our right mouse button makes us throw something underhand, which means you can throw it literally into a door, over a wall, etc, etc. And there is a slight little bug there with it buzzing away, but you get the idea short and far. Here you can see I'm actually playing as the Grenadier class with the Taliban but this is going to be the same for the 203 for the Americans as well. So we have our beautiful 203 and we're ready to kick some ass with this thing. These things actually have a activation charge of around 50 meters so if I fire this at this wall it's not going to explode. We actually need to get some distance, so don't go using this in close quarters. It just won't have any effect. And there you can go. Dead infantry on the other end of that, and it's a beast. The splash damage is rather quite nice. So use this when you see the enemy on top of a building, in a building, side of a compound, you name it. It gets the job done very nicely indeed. So here we are in our squad leader role and in order for all these guys to be able to spawn as we mentioned earlier for a rally point we literally press the T key and we put down a spawn point. Getting some good FPS on this map. And there we go, it will put this thing down here and the guys can spawn in on that. So we're going to push on to the next location and we're going to build an FOB so you get an idea of what and how we actually do that. And the guys are going to get the shovels out and they're going to help. So here we are and I've started to put down the hideout. First of all, I need you to put down the radio, which you can see over to the left, and I've actually put down an ammo crate. Now, the actual radio hideout is the main epicenter, should we say, of your FOB. And I have put this in a terrible, and I mean terrible, location. Anybody coming up that valley are going to see that radio straight away. So this really is a, a lesson 101 of not what to do, because I can't actually build anything on the side. Now, we have points, and points make prizes up at the top left. As you can see, I'm waiting for that number in yellow to build up, and that represents the numbers on here that we can actually spend. And obviously, the more expensive, the more better defense-wise it is, such as bunkers and uh, HESCO walls and things of that nature. Now, things you need to be aware of is that you can't place a radio or a hideout for the other team within 400 meters apart from each other, and this includes enemy radar hideouts as well. And at the time of placing the radio, two additional team members, not necessarily squad members, they have to be very close. So it's one member has to be near you for a rally point, and two need to be near you in order to build the FOB. And the actual main part, the radio hideout, is the only part that doesn't need shoveling. Every other part needs the rest of your squad members to get dirty with the shovels and start building. Once we have our main radio or our hideout down for the Taliban, we can put down elements such as these HESCOs and everything else, but they can be within a 50 meter radius only, so we can spread this out quite large, and you can build yourself a super fob should you want one. The more people shoveling, the quicker it gets done, 
And things such as HESCO blocks and roadblocks, you can place them on top of each other to build them up into a super, super duper fob, should you want to. And of course we have ladders as well that enable you to get up there. So the more you spend, the better it is. The harder it is for the enemy to actually get in here and destroy this fob. And also, as we mentioned earlier, the fob once this is built and the radio's down, the entire team can spawn here, not just my squad. Now we can't use the shovel as a melee weapon yet, which would be amazing. Uh, but you can use your shovel on the enemy uh, FOB to start actually destroying it. The only things you can't destroy with your shovel is the radio, the ammo crates and the ladders. And of course the FOB, you can't destroy that, but I will give you more information on how you destroy that in a later video. Now this is the details on the ticket system. Every time you die, we lose a ticket. If you lose control of a point and the enemy take it over, we lose 10 tickets. And if you lose the fob, it's 10 tickets as well. When all the control points are taken by the opposing team, the other team bleeds tickets at one a second, which is, doesn't sound a lot, but it's ticking away. And as soon as the team hits zero, it's lost the fight and your team cannot win. And that is the end of the game. So what does that mean for you and me? Well, it means that when you die, or you're down, should I say, injured and down, Wait for the medic, call out for the medic, wait for the medic to get you, because you really are helping your team. I know everybody wants to get back in the action and start fighting, but if you want to win the fight, and that's what we're here for you, then let the medic revive you. Now when it comes to the console commands, I've only just put the most often used ones. There are quite a few commands in there that are probably only going to be really used by the devs. So. These are the ones you're going to use on screen, uh, Suicide and uh, Stat FPS if you're not using a recording system. Uh, but it's not really something that you're really going to look into. There are a lot more, and if anybody wants them, I may put them in the About box at the bottom, but probably not. Um, those are the commands, console commands. Use them by pressing the tilde key, type it in, bish bosh bosh, jobs are good. Hello! God damn it, I've got a pebble in me flip-flop. Well, that's it, guys, really. That's the end of this basic guide. And this really is the basic stuff. There are a lot more, shall we say, complex game mechanics working under the skin of it once you actually start to scratch away. But for, I think for the beginning, this video is probably... People are probably not going to watch all of it, but it really will help new players start to get a grasp of what's going on. Hell, I've been in since, what, the second week, was it? I'm a commander backer, and there are still things and occasions where I go, oh, why can't I put this fob here? Why can't I do this? It's one of those things where the more you play it, and especially play with experienced squad leaders, you'll start to pick it up really quite quickly, and when you do, you'll see what an absolute gem this game is. And uh, spending money on the, uh, the Kickstarter was probably the best thing this community did. It's brilliant that there are this amount of players in at the minute, and when the fact it goes open, to, uh, open on Steam for everybody to get in, it's going to be a nightmare with going through all this stuff again of how do I do this, what's this, blah blah blah. But the only way to learn is to get in, make your mistakes, get shouted at, get pissed off, and try again. <laughs> I'm joking. Hopefully this guide has been of help to you and the new players, and if you've got any questions, you can leave them in the box below. Otherwise, if I'm in-game, give us a shout, give us a holler, give us an Allah snack bar, whatever it is, whatever team I'm on, and I'll help you to the best I can, and who knows, you may even get in the next YouTube video. In the meantime, this has been Squad, New Beginner's Guide. Hope you've enjoyed it. I will be doing some more videos. No doubt be doing some more videos now that it's 24-7 access. I've still got my gold. Absolutely brilliant. I shall see you in the next squad video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.